Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and this is module number 2 where we are discussing the definitions and measuring method pertinent to uh, rechargeable batteries. Uh, this is lecture number 7 where uh, I will introduce various terminology that is related to secondary batteries including half cell, full cell, uh, redox couple already I have introduced as a part of my earlier lecture. Then positive and negative electrode, the concept of positive and negative electrode we avoid uh, calling the anode and cathode. Then we will talk about the active materials and finally, module, pack and battery management system. So, uh, in this uh, particular uh, lecture as I told, uh, first we will talk about the terminology uh, that is related to secondary battery. We will talk about the redox couple uh, in little bit more extent. Then active material, positive and negative electrodes, half cell and full cell concept, state of the battery we will introduce and finally, the module pack and battery management system. So, uh, this already uh, uh, you know uh, by this time that uh, um, uh, it is uh, actually uh, very crucial to grasp uh, the difference between a primary and secondary batteries and the ter terminology which is anode and cathode. So, we will introduce a term which is accumulator, the accumulator stores the energy converting electrical energy uh, into the form of a chemical energy. So, in primary battery chemical energy gives you electrical energy, but uh, the accumulator what it does you apply uh, electrical energy and get back the chemical energy again for uh, reuse. So, this energy can be given back at any moment. So, secondary battery uh, as opposed to a primary battery um, with uh, certain exception. Uh, that uh, primary battery is not rechargeable um, in most of the instances, but uh, secondary battery you can reuse it. So, the elementary cell that uh, comprises of two electrode that is basically immersed in an electrolyte. So, lithiated metal oxide and graphite uh, basically these are the two very common electrode and electrodes they are in solid state and electrolyte is either liquid or in a gel state. I have introduced different types of battery. For example, if you remember sodium sulfur battery, there the electrodes are liquid and electrolyte that was is solid ceramic. In case of lithium air battery, uh, one of the two electrodes is gaseous. In the redox flow battery, the electrolyte and electrode they are combined. The material for electrodes are basically diluted in the electrolyte and that is separated by a solid membrane. In molten battery, negative electrode is basically molten magnesium, electrolyte is a mixture of magnesium, uh, potassium and sodium chloride based uh, uh, mixture and positive electrode is antimony that is also under molten condition. So, there are various types of uh, possibilities that is there in the secondary electrode, but mostly we will confine ourselves to the solid. Uh, electrodes and either gel or uh, the liquid base electrolyte throughout uh, the discussion uh, of this particular course. So, as I told that oxidation and reduction reaction um, where this atom or ions they gain um, one or more electron or vice versa whenever uh, oxidation is taking place uh, then um, from metal for example, electron is going out from this metal. So, anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place uh, that is for the primary battery, cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. So, the electrode will switch from playing the role of cathode to act as anode depending on the direction of the current. So, you, as you know from anode um, the current goes to the cathode while the cells are discharged, the reverse occurs while the cell is charged. So, a positive electrode or uh, respectively a negative one will always remain positive or respectively negative whether the secondary battery is being charged or discharged. 
see this that one. So, I define as a positive electrode during charge, it acts as an anode, and during discharge, it is a cathode. And the same thing applies for the negative electrode. So, during charge, it acts as a cathode, and discharge, it acts as an anode. So, in the rechargeable battery, we will not use any more the term cathode or anode. Instead, we will always use this term as positive electrode or negative electrode in all our future <coughs> description. So, you know the active material which undergoes this uh, uh, redox reaction, they takes part in this charge discharge reaction. So, say for example, lithium cobalt oxide uh, and the negative active material uh, is say graphite. Uh, so, these are the material where the actual redox reaction takes place. So, in lithium ion battery, the role of electrolyte is just to transport lithium ions from one electrode to other. The concentration of lithium ion therefore, remains constant even down to the consumption of the lithium over time to reconstitute the interface layer between the electrolyte and electrode. This concept will uh, be clarified when I will talk about a case study. So, we will use the term inactive material which is added uh, inside the electrode material for various purpose and also the casing of the battery, the electrical connections, the separator uh, which is there in between two electrodes which are not involved in the charge discharge reaction, we call these are inactive material. So, the active material is not all. So, usually a typical electrode if you see uh, for a uh, lithium ion or uh, any rechargeable battery, uh, it looks like that you have a current collector and then you have active material which is mixed with inactive material. In this case, we use acetylene black which conduct the electrons and the binder which is PVDF which strongly adhere the whole mass into the current collector. So, uh, the total uh, composite electrode looks like that. So, typically this is for uh, the positive electrode. So, uh, you have uh, the ionic resistance uh, in the bulk electrolyte that must overcome then ionic re resistance of the composite electrode that must be overcome. Then there is a charge transfer resistance uh, involved when uh, the alkali ion is going inside the electrode material or going out from the electrode material. And uh, diffusion is also operative uh, in the active material. So, a lot of phenomena that occurs inside this composite electrode during charge and discharge operation. We will come back to it at the latter part of um, the course in other lectures. Uh, but uh, the active material uh, is constitute uh, only 80 percent of the total composite electrode and 20 percent is uh, 10 is uh, your acetylene black and 10 is the PVDF. So, that constitute the actual electrode material. <coughs> so, again uh, if I come back to our uh, old Daniel cell, you can see that uh, uh, this uh, half cell reaction uh, when you talk about it. So, zinc is basically oxidized and the standard reduction potential as I told this is positive and it is measured with respect to a hydrogen standard NHE standard hydrogen uh, electrode is about plus 0.76. And uh, in the cathodic region, uh, copper ion is getting reduced to electroplate copper and this voltage is measured uh, as plus 0.34. Uh, and uh, by convention, uh, this uh, voltage is taken as uh, negative. Uh, because basically it is not the standard reduction potential, it is electropositive material. So, the half cell reaction already I have described uh, uh, with respect to uh, hydrogen, it is measured uh, for the zinc and uh, copper half cell, um, the reaction uh, in my earlier part of the uh, lecture already we uh, covered that. So, this is uh, given a voltage about uh, 
under standard condition. So, uh, this anode half cell reaction uh, is plus 0.76 and uh, cathode is 0.34. So, the electrochemical series which I described in my earlier lecture. Um, uh, so, if you consider that the fluorine gas will have the highest tendency to be reduced or gain electrons and lithium metal has the highest tendency to get oxidized or lose electron. So, if you want to make uh, a high voltage battery, you should take this, this two material, but it is extremely difficult to construct this kind of material. So, while forming a galvanic cell, the couple higher in the table form the cathode usually and couple lower in the table that forms the anode. So, this is written in this kind of notation that lower couple A, this is separated by a separator and this is the higher couple. Uh, higher redox couple which is cathode. So, uh, for zinc uh, the standard potential is 0 0.76, uh, for copper it is 0 0.34 and uh, for the full cell you get therefore 1.10 volt. So, the direction of the spontaneous uh, change that takes place in a galvanic cell is the decreasing of the Gibbs free energy. So, the cell potential um, is related to the Gibbs energy and uh, this uh, is uh, defined as already I talked about it is minus n E cell into f where uh, this is the cell potential and this is defined to be positive uh, f is Faraday constant and n is the number of moles of electron that migrate from anode to cathode in the cell reaction. So, when the electrode are in their standard state, um, the free energy change is called uh, the standard reaction, standard reaction gives energy. Uh, so, this is uh, defined at del Z 0 term. So, in the Daniel cell if you consider uh, two electrons are transferred in the cell reaction, so n is equal to 2. Uh, that half cell reaction uh, it is very clear then the full cell reaction because when you talk about the full cell then the uh, electron which is exchanged it is uh, no longer appeared there. So, uh, the value of del G r in a standard cell is minus 2 E cell into f and uh, you can multiply with the Faraday constant. So, this value will be getting. So, you can calculate the standard free energy. And when E cell is measured in volt, the value of del G r uh, is usually in joule and the concentration of copper and zinc ions are in the standard state. So, this uh, equation is valid only for the standard uh, condition. Now, I already talked about the Nernst equation E cell is equal to E 0 minus R t by N f into L n of q. So, that is the cell potential and uh, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, F is the Faraday constant and N is the number of mole that is exchanged that is migrated. Now, as I told that earlier I talked about uh, one particular redox couple. So, let us take a generalized equation that A and B that is uh, reacting uh, to form uh, x mole of x and y mole of y. So, you can estimate uh, the Q. Um, value and uh, 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 the concentration A that denotes the concentration of compound A at any time and electrons involving gases the concentration term can be replaced by the partial pressure. So, uh, we can always estimate uh, the cell potential uh, using the Nernst equation. Now, let us see how it works. So, uh, uh, I can write the cathode and anode reaction and overall cell reaction say for a uh, couple of uh, nickel and zinc electrodes. So, one can uh, determine the standard cell voltage, uh, one can calculate the cell voltage if the concentration of the ions uh, are not uh, in standard state 1 uh, mole per liter, but something else. And uh, then finally, um, if the temperature is not in the standard state, uh, then what will be the cell potential? So, this uh, can be estimated from the Nernst equation and this is one of the examples. So, for example, that uh, you consider the reduction potential uh, from the electrochemical table 
and uh, zinc is act, acting as anode and nickel is acting as cathode. So, the cathode reaction is uh, it is getting reduced and anode reaction this is getting oxidized. So, this is the total cell reaction for Daniel cell also I have described it earlier. So, uh, for the total um, uh, cell potential this is under standard condition is cathode minus anode. So, the cathode uh, value from the table we have gotten 0.25 and anode is minus 0.76 for zinc. So, the total uh, cell potential under standard condition will be 0.51 volt. So, now we will apply the Nernst uh, relation which uh, already derived uh, in my last lecture. So, value of E is E 0 minus R T by N F into L N Q. So, I put the value of E 0 here which is derived. So, R T by N F into L N Q. Now, uh, this R T by F value I can calculate by putting the value of R T and F and which is coming about uh, 0 0.02569 volt. Uh, this is uh, if you take uh, number of electron um, it is uh, coming uh, because number of electron is 2. So, this value is coming as this one and the Q can be estimated here uh, not the activity, but the concentration uh, in case of a dilute solution I told activity can be replaced by concentration. So, this value the concentration of the um, product uh, from the full cell reaction and the reactant. So, this uh, value can, can estimate you can put this into the Nernst equation and you see uh, under the, this condition the standard electrode uh, potential was 0 0.51 it is increased to 0 0.532. Again, you can uh, use the Nernst equation and instead of T, the value 298, you can uh, put 323 uh, Kelvin because uh, at 50 degrees Celsius, it is asked that how much uh, voltage that you will get and then you can estimate the value of E is 0 0.534 volt. So, you can see that uh, it is not only standard electrode potential, but the temperature and concentration of the electrolyte in a cell that also affect the uh, voltage. So, uh, I have uh, already uh, introduced uh, the thermodynamic concept to estimate this voltage. This lecture also I will recapitulate that. So, you have seen that uh, uh, for different types of electrode materials starting from lithium cobalt oxide or molybdenum disulfide molybdenum disulfide or lithium titanium oxide LTO, uh, what are the typical uh, charge and discharge potential. So, the voltage uh, is not always constant particularly for this material, you see the voltage is continuously changing um, uh, upon discharge and also upon charge of the cell. So, the nominal voltage is the average voltage of the cell that is measured from the discharge pro profile. We have already talked about the capacity of the cathode and anode and uh, the capacity uh, you see if you consider the graphite the voltage is pretty low here. So, it can act as your negative electrode and uh, you can take uh, any one of this as positive electrode. So, the capacity will be very large here right. So, the charge must be balanced in the positive and negative electrode. So, the charge balance can be done by this relation and then since the capacity of the uh, negative electrode is uh, pretty large for most of this battery material, then you will see that it should have a very small amount of relatively smaller amount of mass in the negative electrode as compared to the positive electrode for the full chemical reaction to take place. So, the theoretical capacity you can calculate from the Faraday law and that already I have uh, explained in uh, my earlier lecture. Coulombic efficiency is given by the charge capacity and discharge capacity ratio. So, usually uh, this is multiplied by 100. Uh, so, that gives you the Coulombic efficiency that tells that the lithium which is transporting uh, rocking between these two electrode whether they are lost somewhere or the amount which is coming out uh, from one electrode is exactly the amount is going back. So, you can define a C rate that is the load current 
to discharge the cell in one hour. So, if the cell is discharged at 2 hour, then it is discharged as C by 2 rate and if it is charged say for example, at 10 C rate, that means it will take only 6 minute for the uh, cell to be charged. Then we can define the cycleability is the discharge capacity, this discharge capacity value with charge discharge cycle and in during this cycleability, it is customary to mention the C rate, the C rate that you are using for this charge and discharge to uh, operation. Uh, rate performance is also important. If you discharge or charge the battery at relatively higher constant current, then you will see the capacity will be progressively reduced. As you increase the uh, current, you will see the capacity is progressively reduced. So, that is something related to its rate performance and why it happens that we will come back to it when we will talk about the case study of particular uh, cell uh, chemistry. Cell polarization is basically the voltage difference between the charge and discharge. So, these are the important terminology which is pertinent to the lithium ion cell. Now, um, the state, uh, states of the battery is important and uh, there the depth of discharge is important. So, depth of discharge is how much uh, discharge till what voltage you can discharge this battery. So, uh, you can basically um, estimate uh, the current uh, and integrate it uh, with the time of discharge uh, with respect to its nominal capacity. So, that will give you the depth of discharge. So, this is of course, a dimensionless value and this is actually expressed as a percentage. So, we uh, define the term depth of discharge is 90 percent, that means uh, it is a deep discharge. Uh, out of 100 percent nominal capacity, we have discharged 90 percent of it. State of charge is important, that is the amount of the charge that is remaining. Uh, with respect to the practical capacity of the rechargeable battery, the accumulator. So, state of charge is the capacity minus uh, the uh, capacity uh, that you are getting uh, during uh, the um, charging state uh, with respect to the nominal capacity. So, the SOC uh, abbreviated form of state of charge is associated with chemical energy. It can be used to evaluate the remaining charge in the battery. It is also a dimensionless value and which is actually um, uh, rep expressed as a percentage. So, state of charge is 1 minus depth of discharge. So, vice versa, depth of discharge is 1 minus state of charge. State of energy is uh, sometimes important. Uh, we can replace the concept of the amount of electricity. Uh, with the notion of energy. The state of energy is the ratio of amount of energy still available within the cell with respect to the total amount of the energy which is stored therein. Another thing which is very important is state of health uh, that uh, the battery management system actually measure uh, in each of the cell what is the state of health. So, that is defined as uh, the charge in discharge uh, state. Uh, with uh, and the ratio with the nominal capacity of the battery. So, as you can see uh, that uh, if you cycle the battery uh, for number of times, so this is the cycle number, then progressively the nominal uh, charge which I consider 100 percent, this is progressively going down going down and uh, up to uh, 2000 cycle typically it uh, drops down to 85 percent. So, that uh, is uh, uh, quite typical for a uh, good cell. Uh, so, the state of uh, health that is depending on the depth of discharge. So, depth of discharge whatever I talked about. So, if you deep discharge it not necessarily will be getting uh, this kind of uh, behavior. So, it depends of the depth of discharge as well. And a um, lot of modeling work uh, is uh, going on how to predict this kind of uh, state of health. 
so the dotted line is basically a fit uh, with the experimental value which uh, usually we get. Now another thing which is important is state of function. The state of function is uh, the ability to render the service for a practical application. For example, the battery that you are using for consumer electronic application, the current uh, that you are uh, draining from the battery that is relatively low and this battery may not be useful for your uh, electric vehicle application where the current profile is not always uh, uniform. So sometimes while you accelerate the car, you need uh, to drain more current while uh, uh, when you uh, go for constant speed, uh, you are driving a constant current. So when this profile is changed, then you see uh, that the battery does not perform well and eventually it depends on the chemistry of the battery. So one must be careful, uh, not all the battery is useful for all the purpose and therefore uh, newer chemistry is always needs to be worked out uh, to serve a particular application. Gravimetric and volumetric capacity is important. The gravimetric capacity is the ratio between the amount of the electricity generation with a given current to the total mass of the secondary battery. It is necessary to specify the discharge current at each stage because you know the rate capability that depends, capacity depends on the drainage current. So that must be uh, mentioned. And volumetric capacity, uh, that is the ratio of the nominal amount of electricity delivered in a given current to the volume of the secondary battery. Usually, this is charge uh, per uh, meter cube, it is mentioned that. This dimension or the overall dimension of the battery module. Uh, so, volume is more important uh, criterion than the mass uh, because uh, you particularly for the mobile application, you need to fit the battery in a fixed space. So, volumetric energy density, uh, that is a very important criteria. Uh, to cater the need of a particular application. Then we talk about the DC internal resistance uh, that is used to denote the sum of the real resistance which comes from the connection, the connectors, the electrodes, the electrolyte and also uh, the re resistance of the um, lithium flow inside the battery material. So, <coughs> This is uh, a standard technique is used to estimate the DC internal resistance. Uh, the first point as you can see, uh, this voltage is measured after 10 seconds of a discharge at a specific current 0.2 times of C by 5 rate. So that is a relatively lower current and then the discharge is immediately followed by another 1 second at C by 5 rate. So, this is the second point. So, you get these two points. The two points have coordinates um, u1 i1 and u2 i2 and uh, we can trace this particular uh, straight line between these two uh, points and uh, uh, we can estimate the internal resistance as uh, u1 minus u2 by i2 minus i1 and uh, you extend this line and then uh, it uh, cuts, uh, this is the extrapolated line and it cuts this current axis and this current is known as short circuit current with the voltage uh, turns out to be 0. So, this uh, short circuit current is uh, given by this relation u1 i2 minus u2 i1 by u1 minus u2. As a part of an assignment problem, I have asked you to estimate that uh, uh, how exactly these relations are coming uh, from simple first principle calculation. <coughs> then um, consumer electronic uh, devices like cell phone or small digital camera uh, function with a single lithium ion cell which generally delivers uh, about 3.7 volt uh, with variable capacity starting from 1000 milliampere hour to uh, 2600 milliampere hour depending on the chemistry that is used. So, this is a typical um, shapes of the battery. Uh, we call this is a pouch cell or prismatic cell and this is cylindrical cell. So, this 
typical voltage is uh, too low for an electrical vehicle or uh, um, if you are talking about the storage battery, this voltage is too low. So, rarely lithium ion battery is used in um, alone means as a single piece. So, uh, for uh, uh, the heavy duty application, uh, they tend to be connected in series uh, to increase the voltage and uh, connected in parallel uh, to increase the capacity. So, each of this cell as you can see and there are various ways to connect the battery, the positive and negative terminal. So, each of this uh, cell uh, if I assume that depending on the chemistry it gives you a nominal voltage of 3.3 volt and uh, capacity is 6.2 ampere hour for this particular shape, then uh, this will have to be connected in series to get uh, a voltage about 13.2 volt and the capacity will get uh, 12.4 uh, ampere hour, uh, 6.2 plus uh, 6.2. So, that will give you 12.4 ampere hour. So, this connections of elements in series and parallel uh, that constitutes uh, a battery of uh, accumulators or we call this is a pack in a very loose sense. Uh, to define a pack, uh, we must uh, use abbreviation like uh, 4S 2 P that means 4 cells are in series and 2 in parallel um, and uh, you can just uh, increase it uh, depending on your need. Uh, but the more important fact is it all depends on the chemistry. So, I will come back to this uh, at a later part of my course that how to improve the energy, how to improve the voltage, what are the fundamentals behind it. That is more important for you to get the quality cells. So, that uh, you can basically in a small space uh, you can uh, have lot of energy. So, that is the idea and also it should be lightweight. So, volumetric energy density and gravimetric energy density both needs to be uh, uh, equally uh, optimized. So, you have a single cell uh, something like this and then you connect it series and parallel and you get uh, uh, this kind of uh, combination and there are various way to connect it. So, I will talk about it while uh, we will talk it in more details in the latter part of the course. And then finally, uh, this modules they are also connected in series and parallel uh, to get uh, what we call a battery pack. So, a battery pack uh, is basically the minimum the, the smallest unit is the cell, then cells are connected in series and parallel to get the module and then finally, the modules are connected in series and parallel to get the pack. Uh, so, that uh, is, is the concept that is followed for um, larger uh, battery which is having uh, higher energy density. So, now uh, you need to have uh, a, a battery management system and uh, this is uh, required because you are connecting the cells in series and also in parallel. So, one of the cell can malfunction. So, that is one way. Second, uh, if it malfunction then the whole battery should not be dead. Another problem is that the discharge capacity for each of the cell although they are from the same chemistry it need not to be same. So, some cell has higher capacity. So, depth of discharge is maintained say 60 percent, but for some cell due to some reason the depth of discharge is uh, far more say 90 percent. So, you need to have cell balance, so capacity balance from one cell to another. It can be done as a active way or passive way. We will talk about it when I will talk in details about the battery management system. So, uh, the battery management system basically that is a electronic module that control this cell. So, it estimate the capacity, it can estimate the state of the charge, it can estimate the state of the health and not only that if the cell is uh, overheated, if there is a possibility of thermal runaway because you know that you are using electrolyte uh, which is organic electrolyte which are flammable. So, it can easily reach the flash point and the whole battery can explode. So, it needs to uh, also properly uh, manage the um, temperature 
within the cell. The thermal management is equally important. So, BMS actually uh, they takes care of the battery. So, the combination of several elements or modules, they are connected in series and parallel in a battery pack or an energy pack which is often contain this kind of battery management. For larger battery, it is mass. For smaller uh, cells, this is not required. Uh, but for uh, battery which is uh, required for renewable energy storage or uh, required for uh, your electric vehicles, the battery management system is uh, the unit that must be developed and you can actually uh, uh, log this data uh, in a data logger or in a small card to see that how the battery exactly performed during charge and discharge. Uh, in, in the practical application. So, this is uh, one of the most important integral part to make a uh, total battery pack. So, this part of uh, the talk uh, is uh, mostly uh, these two uh, books you can consider as a study material, particularly the book by uh, Glaze and uh, Genis and also for uh, some initial concept the book by Richard Telly, chapter number 9 is useful. And this book uh, you can use as a uh, reference book for modern batteries. Um, this is a quite uh, good book to clarify the concepts. So, in this particular lecture, we talked about terminology related to secondary battery. We talked about nominal voltage, the discharge capacity, C rate, cycleability, rate performance. Then uh, again, we reintroduce the redox couple for. Uh, uh, several components uh, which is involved uh, in the electrochemical cell. Then we talked about the active material, uh, we uh, clarify the concept of positive and negative electrodes. Then we talked about half cell and full cell, uh, then define the state of the battery in terms of depth of discharge, uh, state of charge, uh, state of energy, state of health and state of function for which purpose the battery is useful. Finally, we introduce the concept of module, battery pack and battery management system. Thank you for your attention.